Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today's video comes from a channel favorite, Simple History, and they just put out a new video about three days ago that I think I definitely wanted to check out, and I think you will hopefully too. And the title is The Americans That Fought for Germany in World War II. So that sounds like an interesting topic, Americans fighting with the enemy. So interested to know what that is, some questions I would have are, were they people, were they Americans that were already living in Germany? Are we talking about people that like defected? That's that's kind of the biggest thing I'm wondering about. And knowing simple history, I know they're going to do a good job and tell a fascinating story. All right, before we begin, just want to let you know of a few things. Uh, make sure to join our Discord server. we got about 8,000 people right now. Uh, there's a link down below to check out. Um, and you can come join our community over there. Um, also, maybe if you're into video games, you can check out my video game channel. That's down there. Also, Patreon if you want to uh, vote on videos and some other fun links down there. But the original video link will be down below. I definitely encourage you to go check that. Give that the view, like, subscribe, all those things. The Simple History folks are awesome. All right. Well, we're going to war. Let's get ready. All right. Let's go. to you by Call of War. Call of War is the free online PvP strategy game PvP played games. by millions of users worldwide. In the game, you can join the war with the country of your choice and fight other players in epic real-time battles. Conquer the world in challenging games over several weeks with up to 100 real players per map. Start in a historically Ooh. accurate World War II environments and rewrite history as you want it. In battle, use iron. the strengths and weaknesses of different unit types such as tanks, planes, and ships. Choose your own strategy to dominate your enemies, tank rush your opponents, establish air superiority, or bombard coastal cities. As you grow stronger, you can also invest in the research tree to use atomic bombs and other devastating oh, weapons from World War II. Build an empire by conquering provinces, capture capitals, and take over entire countries. Win by waging war on your neighbors and forming strategic alliances with other players from around the world. Call of War is fully cross-platform, so you can play with the same account on PC or mobile. We've set up a special game of Call of War for the first viewers that click the link in the description. Click the link below, type Simple History in the search bar, right, go and Terry enter the crew. code Simple History. We'll get us the a victory. are limited, so don't miss out. Click our link in the description below to get 13,000 gold and one month of High Command subscription well, for free. We're off the Available gold standard only for then. 30 days. Nobody's using gold then. All right, what do we got? The Americans that fought for Germany in World War II. 1933 to 1945. Okay. Before he had declared so, right. war on the U.S. So, so they're going 33. So Adolf Hitler took into, uh, took power in 1932. Um, so they're basically saying when Hitler and the Nazi Party has kind of emerged as the leaders um, now of the uh, German government. Say on December 11th, 1941, Hitler held the view that it was a decadent country plagued by racial problems and social inequalities. It is widely known that Hitler and his entourage were watching American movies, but for the German public, Everybody they was. were banned for fear of spreading decadence. Yeah. In the Fuhrer's opinion, the Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt was a nuisance who was not leading America properly. He did not like FDR very much. He, he gave him uh, a lot of crap you can hear in speeches. He also discounted the United States due to its neutrality laws and their America first policy of isolationism. Yeah, Though he believed yeah American isolationism really i mean in a way it was attempted uh back to like monroe doctrine of the turn of the century and what we meant by that what we meant by isolationism is sticking to the region around uh in the western hemisphere right it, united states had some imperialist activities in latin american things but not getting involved specifically in european activities and then after the united states kind of got dragged into world war one um that policy kind of strengthened after it was like okay we're staying out of these foreign conflicts um, so kind of declaring that, but of course, what's going to change that eventually is when the, when World War II actually breaks out, United States kind of, again, sitting on the sidelines, but was, uh, still doing business with the allies, kind of like what's happening in World War One, And that, uh, definitely upset Adolf Hitler in Germany for the fact that they were saying, Hey, you're neutral, but you're out here doing business with the enemies, a similar, a similar grievance that people had in, uh, World War One with. Uh, the United States is, yeah, you're saying you're neutral, but you're doing business here with a, with a certain enemy. 
um, very one-sided that way. That the final conflict for world hegemony would be fought between Nazi Germany and the USA, he underestimated his future enemy. So with World War II rapidly approaching, he pleaded that the Volksdeutsch, people of German heritage outside the Reich, should return home to the fatherland and help defend it. Many German immigrants who came to America still bitterly remembered the anti-German hysteria that swept across the United States yeah. towards the end of World War I. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, they, you know, that happens in, in history of a lot of countries, the kind of xenophobia that happens. And again, if you're like, even though you're somebody that may have left that country, right, for the reasons that your host country may dislike that if you're the Japanese that came over to the United States because you got out of Imperial Japan, or again, you're somebody leaving Nazi Germany. Um, when they came to America, they still got labeled by, by a lot of other Americans as, you know, poor because, you know, it's like, oh, you're from Germany. You must be supportive of that, even though they're like, well, we don't live there anymore. There's a reason we left there, right? So that was really common. You saw in World War I, um, a lot of anti-German sentiment. It would have been difficult. So I guess they're saying some of those people were like, fine, we're leaving again. Many things associated with Germany were boycotted. When America declared war on Germany, public pressure brought to an end most German language newspapers, German specific social and cultural activities, and the use of the German language in the service of the Lutheran and reformed churches. Which is where, I mean, those churches, like Lutheran Church started in Germany, so it would have that. I heard stories, too, about a lot of Germans that wanted to stay actually end up changing their name, where you get people like Germans that had the name Schmidt and then changed their name to Smith to make it sound more American to avoid, you know, being, being prejudiced against. In many places, even Beethoven was banned. In 1914, 24% of American high school students studied the German language. Later on, German language courses practically disappeared from schools. You don't see it much anymore. Streets, all. neighborhoods, suburbs, towns, foods, and breeds of dogs lost their German names. Many families with German surnames Americanized or Anglicized them, or at least changed the names of their businesses. Dachshunds became Liberty Hounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At one stage, the sellers of sauerkraut were forced to give it the more American yeah. patriotic name yeah. of Liberty Cabbage. When I, when I used to teach uh, U.S. history, I haven't taught U.S. history in a few years. I teach only world history now, but when I used to teach U.S. history, that was always fun to talk about was some of the name cha name changes um, that they did for stuff like that. Uh, hamburger was like, yeah, it was always Liberty, liberty Steak, I think is what they called Hamburger. And yeah, Liberty Cabbage, they just, they would change the name from stuff like that. Freedom Fries, America, man. So funny. Resentment started to grow among some German Americans about how they had been treated during this time, as they reflected on how the German language and culture was admired by many Americans before the outbreak of the First World War. There was a growing admiration of how Germany had eventually recovered after the war under the National Socialist German Workers' Party. To Remember Adolf Hitler was named Times Man of the Year? Become a new dynamic and reinvigorated nation. So German Americans once again became proud of their heritage and through such organizations as the German American Bund, reconnected with their Germanic roots. But this also meant that these immigrants were being more and more exposed to a glamorized version of German National Socialism. This was due to the German government in the 1930s having established strong links with the German-American Bund, which had gained popularity, which in turn was becoming increasingly more fanatical and nationalistic in nature. So many felt it was their patriotic duty to return to Germany when it went to war with Britain in 1940. I still think we're, I'm sure we're talking about very, very small percentage. So these are people that didn't grow up in America, it seemed like, though. Um, they, again, had immigrated, and then now they're going back. Each year in the 30s, many more Germans were returning to Germany from America than were emigrating there. It was the reverse of the previous trend. Those that did were mostly absorbed into combat units and fought alongside their new fellow countrymen. George Nafziger wrote in his German Order of Battle that the Waffen SS had five US Volksdeutsch, Americans of German descent. However, a lot of documentation regarding the immigration and repatriation of such soldiers did not survive the war. Yeah. Such documents were kept in major cities that were bombed and are now lost in history. Therefore, the number of American Germans who went to fight for Germany during World War II is impossible to estimate. 
Okay, so yeah, I mean, if it's a possible decimate, we'll see what they're what they're going to use as as examples of that. There's some specific stories, maybe. But some were put to specialist use as propaganda tools. True. Typical of this was Herbert Bergman, who was born in Minnesota to German immigrant parents. Okay. He had served in the U.S. State Department, and when the war broke out between Germany and the United States, he went to work as a broadcaster in Berlin for the German English language radio station De Bunk. Okay. That makes sense. That that is a big tool, you know. Anytime you can, people love you know bringing a, a a foreign influence that supports a local cause, right? Because it makes it justifies your policies there. So yeah, this guy could totally be used as, as kind of a puppet. He was born in the United States, right? But has a German ancestry, and it said he even served in the State Department, so he held government positions. So actually worked for the U.S. government, and then yeah, he's going over perfect person to use. Um, because it's going to give, yeah, Germans what they believe is going to be a justified opinion, unbiased, what they think is going to be unbiased opinion of seeing a German perspective that was on the ground of the United States. Pretty, pretty smart propaganda tool for sure. Other countries have done this um, all the time. Which claimed to be the voice of all free America, transmitting from somewhere in the Midwest, but in reality broadcast from Bremen, Germany. After oh. the war, he was convicted of 13 acts of treason. So they... <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Was they were they saying this was being broadcast to Germany though, right? I'm gonna go back like ten seconds. So, from what I understood, the idea was, or now that they're saying that this dude was broadcasting, they were telling the Germans that he was broadcasting from the United States. Let me go back. All Free America Station Debunk, which claimed to be the voice of All Free America, transmitting from somewhere in the Midwest but in reality broadcast from Bremen, Germany. Yeah. Okay. After the war, he was convicted of 13 acts of treason. His defense was that he had been insane at the time and he had been bullied into doing the broadcast by the Gestapo. Nevertheless, he was sentenced to between six and 20 years in prison and died in federal custody in 1953. Jeez. But by far the most notorious of these lost okay. sons of the Reich was Martin James Monty, an American from Missouri whose mother was of German heritage. Okay. In 1942, he joined the United States Air Force and had qualified to fly the P-38 Lightning and P-39 Era Cobra. Monty ended up being promoted to first lieutenant, but his loyalty seemed to always be to the new Germany. So when he ended up being stationed abroad to India in August... I wonder if people picked up on that, like if, if other people there, but I mean, he's, he's obviously a good pilot because he's going up the ranks there, but I wonder if he had spoken out to maybe not publicly but to his other uh, fellow soldiers that were um, part of his group august 1944 he deserted he managed to get a lift on a military cargo plane to cairo egypt then caught a follow-on flight to tripoli libya afterward he talked himself aboard a plane to the allied occupied italian city of naples after a few days of maneuvering, he managed to requisition a Lockheed F-5E Lightning for a test flight. Stole it. He stole this newly repaired American reconnaissance plane and defected to the Germans. The Luftwaffe quickly replaced the aircraft's U.S. markings and gave it a new call sign before sending it to Germany. Because that, that'll, 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 that'll fool everybody. You get the whole size and shape of an American plague, just slab on a swastika. <laughs> An Iron Cross, something, you know. The repurposed plane served its new owners through to the war's end. Wow. At first, Monty was given work as a propaganda broadcaster yeah. in a propaganda unit called SS Standard Kutegas under a pseudonym Captain Martin Weithop. In his broadcasts, he tried to convince American combat troops that the USA should fight alongside Nazi Germany against the Soviet Union. Okay. However, that would have been a, again, a... That would have been a thing that could, especially early on, could have totally been something that people talked about. Um, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, during the, the early 30s, early and mid 30s, people in America saw the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, as a far bigger, great or a far greater enemy and uh, um, than, than Adolf Hitler did. Again, there was a lot of actually positive press in the early to mid 30s about Adolf Hitler that came out of America because he was like running this republic, although he kind of came into power and um, through some other means. But but yeah, like people had supported him. And then remember with, with communism, it was this 
spawn of Satan in the eyes of uh, the Americans, especially after the first Red Scare, after World War One, um, after the Russian Revolution. So people went in, you know, into this this decade of the 30s with, again, people far more fearful of Joseph Stalin. So it would have been something that you could have marketed as, hey, like, Germans are going after communists. You know, we should support that. That's like a core American value is, is anti-communism and support of uh, capitalism and democracy. But... Yeah, I could see that. I could see it happening. But, but I mean, by the time the war is going on, though, people had kind of changed that tune, though. So probably by this time, it would have been too late. After only a few speeches, his job was changed to writing propaganda leaflets that were distributed to Allied prisoners of war. Monty even became an Untersturmführer in the Waffen SS and was ordered to fight in northern Italy in April 1945. Shortly after his arrival in early May, the American-born Waffen-SS officer in German uniform surrendered to the U.S. 5th Army in Milan what are they gonna think? and tried to convince them that he was an escaped American POW. Of course. At first, Monty was court-martialed for being AWOL and for misappropriation of the F-5E Lightning. Okay. So did they, they didn't know that he had truly defected and really was a part of their military? They, they kind of bought his story. Found guilty and sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. At that early... 15 years of hard labor. We don't, it's amazing that in, in, in this time now, in like the 40s, you still have that. That's like a, still a thing. You're sentenced to hard labor. Stage, prosecutors did not know of his defection or his mm, propaganda okay. activities on behalf of Germany. In early February 1946, out. President Harry S. Truman commuted his sentence to time served contingent on his re-enlistment in the Air Force as a private. Monty did so and within two years had climbed to the rank of sergeant. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Army intelligent officials poring over captured records in Germany uncovered evidence of his okay. contribution to the Nazi war effort. On November 1st, 1947, a Washington Post reporter broke the story. Okay. On January 26, 1948, minutes after the Army granted Monty an honorable discharge, the FBI arrested him. After psychiatrist Dean Monty fit to stand trial, a federal grand jury indicted him for 21 overt acts of treason. The minimum penalty was a five-year prison term and a $10,000 fine. The maximum was death. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a huge range um, to, to do that. But I mean, okay, so I'm interested to see what did this guy get? Monty, during the trial, pleaded guilty. The judge imposed a prison sentence of 25 years and a fine of ten thousand dollars so yeah. now we will so kind of in the middle there of 25 years. never know how many of those americans with german heritage had responded to the call to return to the fatherland it was not just answered from america but also from around the world though most likely in very small numbers wow interesting this episode was brought to you by Call of War. Conquer the world in challenging games over several weeks with up to 100 real players per map. Start in a historically accurate World War II environment and rewrite history as you want it. Call of War is fully cross-platform, so you can play with the same account on PC or mobile. Click on our link in the description below to get 13,000 gold and one month of high command subscription for free. Only available for 30 days. All right, so let's go ahead and package my thoughts here, um, having having seen this now. But yeah, this I think this is an interesting theme to kind of talk about. I mean, they did preface it by saying that it's hard to get a lot of these records, but I thought both of those, the both of those stories were uh, were interesting. There that you have this guy. Both of them again uses propaganda, but a guy using like a radio show, and then he pled what is a pled insanity or whatever. Uh, but the last story was definitely the most uh, interesting one because the dude ends up being pretty influential on both sides where he again had climbed up to what a lieutenant or whatever in the air force and then he defects and then um they use him for propaganda like they were saying and then he fights and then <laughs> yeah he's able to to convince when he gets captured you know that he uh that was was an american that was that was hiding and then basically continues this career for a few years when they say he got up to like a sergeant or something Amazing how he was able to kind of hide that backstory, but then you see with the press uh, ended up finding out his information and that sort of thing. But it's interesting that he came back and wanted to continue this this career that, again, he had started in the U.S. and then goes over to Germany and then keeps, you know, being a member of the military there. And I don't know. It seemed like, I don't know if this guy just was always swinging as far as his loyalty goes, but um, or just wherever he could get 
popular and had a biggest stage, almost like a mercenary in a way. But nevertheless, that is a fascinating story to see that. And I, I wonder about these things in wars when you have defectors. There's interesting stories uh, that are, you know, very, pretty rare in the cases, but things like for a more, in a more American history, um, a few, a handful of people that fighting in the Korean War actually like defected to the North Korean side. Those are some interesting stories uh, that you can check out. But seeing those around, they're always interesting and to hear the perspective of these soldiers of why they did such a thing. Um, I think it's pretty fascinating, a little piece of military history. All right. Well, anyways, great job. I love, again, the simple history stories. They just they tell great ones. That's why I like them. It's kind of the unique, interesting stories. It's a, it's a great thing to look at. Hope is able to add a little bit. I mean, this was more of a learning experience to me, and I'll definitely be passing that on. All right. But uh, on the way out here, make sure that you give uh, their video a like, subscribe, and all that. And if you haven't subbed to my channel, I'd love to have you around as well and be a part of our community. Again, you can be a part of our community by Discord. If you want to uh, be able to vote in videos, you could join the Patreon. Um, also, if you want some history merch, there's some stuff down at Teespring Gaming Channel uh, down there as well. All kinds of fun stuff to occupy your time and hopefully your love of history. All right, and with that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.